Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to see you this morning. My name is Joe Monahan. I want to welcome you on behalf of myself and also our associate pastor Kathleen Stoles and on behalf of the whole congregation. We're happy you're here. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms and all the grandmas and we're really grateful to have you with us today and that you've uh, chosen to spend part of your special day with us here this morning and that's important to us. So I hope that each one of you will take a minute and uh, there's a red attendance pad that's on the inside of the pew. I hope that you'll pick that up, pass it down, and then pass it back towards the center. And as it comes by, I hope that you will take a moment to take note of the names of the folks who are seated around you, greet one another by name. And if you are visiting here today, um, if you'd be willing to share with us your name and address information, we'd love to be able to let you know about things that are going on here at the church to put you on our uh, weekly mailing list for our weekly uh, email newsletter and then our monthly newsletter as well. So we'd welcome the opportunity to do that, and we'd thank you for that. So um, let's see, a couple of announcements as we're getting started here. First of all, I want to say thank you uh, for your support of the United Methodist Women Flower Sale yesterday, uh, even though it was so rainy, uh, apparently business was great, and so that's wonderful because the proceeds of the flower sale help to support our mission projects, so our two mission trips that we take every year. So we want to thank you for that, and I'm, I'm not sure, but I think if the tent's still up and there are still plants out there, there's still an opportunity, yeah, uh, Susie says yes, that there is still an opportunity if you forgot to buy something for your mother, to buy something on your way, and uh, we'd love to have, we'd love to be of service in that way. Um, we are beginning today our diaper drive for the Christian Caring Center, and so this is a, uh, something that we've been doing for the past couple of years, receiving diapers between now and uh, Father's Day, and it helps us to be able to support people who are in need. And uh, diapers are one of those things that cannot be purchased with food stamps, but they are really very necessary, especially for a working family has to send their kids to, uh, to a daycare, really important. So we thank you uh, for your support of that project. We also wanna let you know that there's going to be a Red Cross blood drive that's happening here uh, tomorrow from two to seven. And so we'd love to have you come and uh, donate, and that'll be up in the uh, Fellowship Hall in Boker Hall and you can sign up for a slot for that uh, on the Red Cross's website, and we would love to see you for that. And then finally, I just want to share with you, uh, she's not in the room yet, but uh, Carol Riley is back uh, among us today, and we're really, really grateful for that. <clears throat> she decided a week off was enough, and so that's all right. And so we're really happy to see her with us, and she seems to be doing quite well, um, so we're really grateful for that. So let's continue now with our, uh, with our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to stand as you're able and join me in our call to worship. God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Yet we struggle to lay aside our striving, even for an hour. Call us into your sanctuary today, Lord Jesus. Let your spirit transport us into your presence. Help us to remember that you are on our side. And, and to remember, remember that, that we, we need only, only be still. still. Of grateful praise. 
I had to work that in. It didn't quite cut through, though. Sorry. <laughs> Needed to do it closer to the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you may be seated. I invite you now to join me in our opening prayer. Father of us all, mother of each one, thank you for your love for us from the beginning of time. You formed us when we were in our mother's wombs, knitting us together in love. Your devotion to us has not failed. Your care has followed us our whole life long. All we are and all we have we owe to you. And so on this, the Lord's, the Lord's Day, in, in this house devoted to your glory, we give honor to you with our hearts and hands and voices. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's take a moment now to greet those around you with the peace of Christ. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Are you all being nice to your mothers today? Thank you, Burton. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing all right today? Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys today? You ready to sing? What's that? <laughs> I only do that during, uh, during uh, Lent and right before Christmas, during Advent. It's funny.
I'd like to invite our children to come forward now for our time together. Hello, how are you? You look lovely, Abby. Come on up, Wes. Hi, how are you? Good. Very good. Good to see you all. So, what's special about today? Do we know what today is? It's Mother's Day, you're right. So I thought it would be appropriate for us to talk a little bit about mothers. Well, how would you describe a mother? Um, how would you describe your mom? Um, give her a hug. You would give her a hug and she would feel so good, right? Yes. yes. What are some things that mommies do? Clean they clean dishes. <laughs> do they make dinner too? Yep, they make dinner, they clean up the kitchen, they clean up those dishes. What? They do laundry, yes. What else do moms do? They feed the dog. They feed the dog, yeah. They take care of, they take care of everybody in the house, even the dog, right? Yes. And the cat. And the cat. Yep. And the fish. Moms do a lot of things, right? And dads do too, but you know we're going to talk about the dads on Father's Day. But you're right, because it takes, it often takes not just moms and dads, but grandparents and all kinds of big brothers and sisters to help out, right? At running a household is a hard thing. Well, you know what, I think in some ways moms are a little bit like God, because moms show you a lot of love with all the things that they do, right? Just like God takes care of us, everybody in the whole planet, moms take care of you and your household, right? Now, if you go to your mom and you say, I want a new, what would you, what would you say I'd, I'd want? I'd want what? I want a puppy. Okay, what else would you say to your mom? I want, what else? I want pizza for dinner. I want chocolate cake for dinner. I want a lunchbox full of brownies and all kinds of good things. And I don't want fruit, and I don't want any vegetables, right? Does mommy give you what you want, or does mommy give you what you need? What you need, and you know what, that's kind of like God too. God gives us what we need, so it's not always everything we want, but it's those things that we need. And, and, does, and does your mom love you even if you do something she doesn't like? Yeah. yeah, mom loves you even when she doesn't like what you're doing, right? That's right. Even when you're playing in mud. Even when you're playing in mud, even when you track that mud in the house, mom still loves you, right? Yeah, and that's kind of like God too. Mom, mom loves you no matter what, and, and God loves you no matter what. But you know what? There's one way moms are different from God. Can I let you in on a little secret? Yes, you're right. They're people. And because they're people, moms make mistakes. Did you know that? They do. Sometimes moms make mistakes. Now, God doesn't make mistakes, but mom does. But you know what? When mom makes a mistake... That's when you can act like God and you can say, it's okay that you made a mistake, mommy. I love you anyway. Just like mommy loves you all the time, you can say, mom, you love her all the time too, okay? We all get to be like God when we say, we love you no matter what. We love you even when you do things we don't like, okay? So you get to be like mom and you get to be like God. <gasps> You get to be like the voice of God when you say, I love you no matter what. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's pretty special. Can you remember that? Okay, let's say a prayer before you go back to your seats. Thank you, God, for loving us no matter what. Thank you for giving us moms. Thank you for giving us dads. And thank you for giving us people that take care of us and who love us no matter what. Amen. Okay, thanks a lot.
Good morning. morning. Scripture readings from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we've been in this series about the Beatitudes, and uh, it's called Happy, and we've been talking a lot about how Jesus describes what it means to be blessed, what it means to be happy. And uh, we found that his idea of happiness, his idea of blessedness is somewhat surprising. And I think today's is no different. Today we're talking about blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I think today's message has a lot to say both to mothers and to fathers, as a matter of fact. Um, One of the things that I think has been a theme, a recurring theme, in the past few weeks is that blessedness is found in our trust of God. Happiness is found in our trust of God. So that's kind of where we're headed today um, in a manner of speaking. Let's uh, get started with a prayer as we begin this morning. God, we thank you for your work all around us. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to come and to hear the scripture read Uh, to hear the music, uh, to be with our moms. Moms are here. Um, We give you thanks just for the opportunity that we have to be with you and to be in your presence and come to a deeper understanding of what it is that you're calling us to do, how it is that you're calling us to live. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. No one aspires to meekness. In fact, if you did... It would actually be kind of a contradiction in terms, kind of like aspiring to humility, right? Although I've known people who have bragged about their humility. That's a different thing. (laughs) When you say that you've got it, you know that in that moment you don't have it, right? I think it's the same thing with meekness. Now, Americans, we generally, we definitely do not perceive that this is a quality of what it means to be American, right? Think about it. Americans are meek. No, right? Americans are loud. Americans are aggressive, right? That idea, that's how we're seen throughout the world, right? If you want politeness, go to Canada, right? That's kind of the, the stereotype. The last time you hired somebody for a job, right, and you were interviewing people to fill that position, did you look for the meekest candidate you could find? Or did you want somebody who was going to be somewhat more aggressive in carrying out the plan? So even the word itself is kind of troubling. Because honestly, we don't use it enough to really know what it means. And so what ends up happening is, in our minds, I think, what does it rhyme with? Weak, right? So I think in our minds, what happens is these two words become somewhat synonymous. And according to the dictionary, you know, you're not too far from the truth. So if you read the entry for meek in the dictionary, it'll find some, you'll find something like docile, you know, or overly submissive, something along those lines doesn't sound positive at all. And then we usually take it a step further and we pair it with the word mild. So usually when we talk about someone, they're meek and mild. We even talk about Jesus as being meek and mild, frequently in songs. 
Who wants to be either one of those things? Like, who wants to be known for that, for being meek and mild? I don't perceive that I want to be known for that. I don't think that I'm known for that, (laughs) right? So how is it that Jesus is saying this is what it means to be happy? Well, I might submit to you that in an age when every other day, it seems, we're hearing about a melee either on an airplane or at an airport, that the world could use a little more meekness. I would submit to you that when people are shouting at each other at town halls and at school board meetings, that we could use a little more meekness. I think that maybe part of what's letting us down here is the translation, actually. Because we're looking for this way to, a way to translate in a, in a you know, very a one word to try to stand in for an idea that's much bigger than that. And I'm not sure that in English we have the right word for what's being said. So sometimes you find people choosing to translate this as uh, blessed are the humble, which is close to it. Meekness and humility, I think, are both kind of a sense of you know your own limits, and I think that that, that is accurate. Um, there's another translation that says something along the lines of, blessed are those who are content with just who they are. That gets to something. But this word meek, still we trip over it. And we wonder what it means. It seems to me that we have to dive a little bit into the biblical background to get an understanding of how else is it used. Perhaps even more illustrative is to think about how we've talked about this concept through time. So let me tell you a story. And it's a story that comes from Egypt. Egypt was one of the early centers of Christianity. It's a story about a monk, and his name was Abba Anastasius. Anastasius, uh, anytime you hear that name, it comes from the Greek word for resurrection, right? Anastasia. Right, so Abba Anastasius. So this monk was in possession of something extraordinarily valuable. He owned a Bible. Now, in the ancient world, a Bible was an unbelievably expensive thing. All the Bibles that existed were handmade, hand copied. So if you had a Bible, That was really something. You had to be a person of great learning to be able to read it, obviously. You had to be a person of some means in order to own it. Abba Anastasius had a Bible. And he kept it in his cell, in his room, in the monastery. One day the Bible went missing. And the thief not knowing exactly what to do with this Bible or how to pawn it, decided maybe I should take it to Alexandria. Alexandria being one of the uh, cities in Egypt that was known for great learning. There was a famous library at Alexandria. It was a center of learning. He said, well, you know, if I'm going to pawn a book, this seems like a logical place that there'd be a market for it. So he takes the book to a dealer in books and says to this man, how much will you give me for this Bible? The man looks at it and says, I don't know a lot about Bible. I think I know, but I really need to check it out. It's kind of like on Pawn Stars, you know, you call in the outside expert. <laughs> I think I'm going to take it to someone. Who did he take it to? Abba Anastasius. So he goes out to the monastery, shows him this Bible. And the old man acts like he's never seen this Bible before in his life. And so the bookseller says, so what do you think? I was thinking about 16 gold pieces. Well, it is a very fine book. 
I think that would be a fair price. Thank you very much. Goes back to Alexandria, sets a meeting with the seller, and explains to the seller how he arrived at his price. I'd like to offer you 16 gold pieces, and you know, I did have it verified. I checked with an expert. I went and talked with Abba Anastasius. The thief looks at him and becomes very nervous. What did the old man say? What do you mean, what did he say? I asked him what it was worth, and he told me. The man said, okay. You know what, I've changed my mind. I don't think I'm going to sell the Bible today. All right. And so the thief set off and he went back to the monastery. Not only did Abba Anastasius get his Bible back, but he also had a new monk that night in the monastery. The person was so convinced and convicted by what had happened, they said, what is this about, this life that you lead? Because I don't understand it. So we tend to think about meekness as submissiveness. But I would argue that Abba Anastasius in that moment was not submissive. It's just that his approach to fighting against an evil that had been done to him, cut against the grain. He was actually following another thing that Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes or the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. One of the things that Jesus says in the Beatitudes is, if someone takes your goods, do not ask for them again. And if you read through, the, through not only the Beatitudes, but the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, this idea of resisting without resisting, of fighting without fighting, it comes up over and over again. Jesus talks about, what does it mean to turn the other cheek? What does it mean if someone forces you to go one mile to go the second mile also? So you have built into the fabric of what Jesus is teaching, this idea of a resistance against evil, but a resistance that is not what we typically think about as combating evil head on. I think this is a good thing to think about on Mother's Day. Because moms, I think, more so than dads, although dads can get there too, for sure, I think moms understand this better, intuitively. Can you think of a time when you were growing up when your mom knew that there was something that you were doing, a path that you were taking that was going to lead to heartbreak? She knew it. But instead of standing in the path and arguing with you about it, she let you go. Follow that path. until that day when the thing that she expected to happen, happened. And in that day, she did not tell you, look, I told you so, because she had never said it to begin with. Instead, she just put her arm around you and said, you know what, it's going to be okay. Don't you think that meekness is all about that decision to say nothing. Don't you think that there's strength in that? It's not weakness. So meekness is this biblical concept that, just like all the Beatitudes, has at its core the notion of trust. And Jesus wasn't the first one to talk about this. The psalmist in Psalm 37 talks about the idea that Blessed are the meek, for they shall live in the land. Right? So there's this idea, and Jesus is taking it and representing it to say, listen, the world belongs not to those who will reach out and grab it and take what they want. 
The world belongs instead to those who trust in God to be able to fight their battles for them. In the call to worship this morning, we quoted a scripture that has to do with, um, has to do with the entry into the, into the promised land. The idea that God is saying to the people of Israel, you don't need to fight. Just be still. Just know that God is with you. There's one translation of the Beatitudes that I like that says, happy are those who claim nothing. So this idea that you're not reaching out and grabbing for something, but instead you're trusting that God is at work to make something happen. Maybe another way to say this, and this ties, I think, to the idea of a mom letting us go our own way is, happy are you when the things that you're ready to fight about are few and far between. Happy are you on that day. So sometimes it's about setting aside what it is that we want. and Stepping back and trying to see how God is at work in a situation so that we can learn what it is that God's doing and learn to trust in that, so that we can see God a little more clearly. Now, sometimes this feels like we're being maybe too passive. But meekness is not passivity. In fact, the ancient Greeks talked about meekness in this way. So this is an Aristotle liked to talk about this idea of a golden mean. And what was meant by that was, you know, there are two extremes. Anything you can think about in life, there are two extremes to which you can take it. And the idea is always to find the balance between the two. That's what makes for happiness and blessedness, according to kind of Greek thought. And the way that Aristotle defined meekness was that balance between being overly passive on the one hand and being overly aggressive on the other. How many of you when you're stuck in traffic, tend to change lanes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. How many of you? It's not getting you there any faster. Science has proven it. There have been studies, traffic patterns, that say people tend to change lanes about once every... This seems really incredibly high to me, but this is what I read. I don't know came from the internet. Blessed are those who don't trust the internet. (laughs) Every mile and a quarter, people change lanes. For what purpose? To increase the likelihood of an accident? Probably. Right? It doesn't get you there any faster. The fact that you're seeing people pass you by, it's kind of an illusion. So Jesus says... Meekness is is blessedness, not because it's weakness, but because it's the power of restraint. That's what it is. It's the power of restraint in our lives. Being able to trust God long enough in order to be able to say, you know what, someone else is taking care of this. I don't need to worry about it right this moment. Last night we were watching The Wizard of Oz. How many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz, right? Right? Um, trying to explain to my kids, like, it used to be that you could only see this once a year, right? You know, that idea came on every year. So we're watching The Wizard of Oz. And this is perhaps the only movie, interestingly enough, where the word meek shows up that I can think of. Do you know the scene where I'm talking about? So at the very end, Well, not at the very end, quite. But when they're in the Emerald City, they're in the Emerald City, and they're going to meet Oz, and they're walking down that long corridor into the, whatever you might call it, I don't know, Oz's place to hang out, the place with all the pipes and fire and smoke and stuff, right? And they come in, and it's a very intimidating scene, and especially for the scarecrow, the scarecrow is terrified of fire, right? It's a very intimidating scene. And you hear Oz say, I am Oz, the great and powerful, right? (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. 
What does Dorothy say? I'm Dorothy, small and meek. Now, in that moment, she, I think, has in her mind this definition of weak, a definition of meek that means weak, like we've been thinking about, because she's so intimidated by this great display of power. But if you think about it, not only up to that point, but everything that comes after, you think about Dorothy and what she embodies. You think about the gentleness that she expresses when she needs to show gentleness. But the challenge that she presents, both to her companions and ultimately to this witch and also to the wizard, right? She's a powerful character. What's interesting is she embodies everything that the others are seeking for. She has the courage, she has the brains, and she has the heart. She has them. And she brings all of these things. She is the biblical definition of meekness. She brings that strength that's not about the power that she has, but it's about being restrained and understanding that there's something bigger at work. So meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength. It's our ability to set aside our desire to do God's job, at least for a time, in order to see what God will actually do in our lives. It's our ability to trust that God is at work around us. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. And as we prepare to receive an offering, uh, I just want to say, you know, if you've been looking in the bulletin, uh, we started our capital campaign, our latest capital campaign for the building project last February, so February of 2016. We're not quite halfway there, but we're almost halfway in terms of the amount that's been given uh, towards that project. So we're making a lot of great progress. And here's the most exciting thing is that uh, we expect in the next week to receive our permits to be able to begin uh, the work. And so what our contractors told us is that they would love to get started on the 22nd of May. So that's a week from tomorrow. And so we expect um, to be able to do that. And so one of the things that uh, we're going to be doing, I didn't want to schedule it until we were 100% uh, sure. And, uh, you know, anything can happen. But I really do believe uh, we're ready to go. And so next Sunday... Uh, we're going to incorporate into each one of the services an opportunity to go out to the site and to pray over the site and uh, to invite God 
into this project as God has already been with us to invite God to be with us through the construction phase and into the building that will arise from this place, that it might be a place of mission and ministry for us. And so I'm really grateful to all of you for your support and really grateful to God for having guided us through um, this latest phase and bring us to where we are today. So keep us in your prayers and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited and I hope that you are too. So let's continue on by offering God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. If you're visiting with us today, maybe for the first time, we want to say just thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you again very soon.
you pray with me? Gracious God, let your church be a haven for those who know no earthly mother or father. Through these gifts, let your church be a faithful witness to your unbounded and unconditional love that embraces all people. Amen. You may be seated. So as we get started today, I do have a few prayer requests I want to lift up. So is today is Grace's 13th birthday? Where's Grace? Is that right? Hmm? Not here. Okay. All right. So we celebrate with Grace, though. Um, we want to give thanks uh, for all the moms, for all the moms. And Lisa Mullen especially wants to give thanks for her mom. So we want to pray for all the moms. Uh, we want to pray for uh, the Muckle family, uh, for comfort and assurance for David and his family. I'm going to pray for uh, Mia. Mia is a breast cancer survivor who uh, has been diagnosed with some new masses. So we want to pray for her. And uh, we want to continue to pray for Douglas Eaton, uh, Dorothy's son, um, on the loss of his wife, Joy. So for all these and for all those who are on our prayer list, uh, we continue to pray. Let's take some time now to go before God in prayer. God, as we gather before you today, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for your work in our lives. We give you thanks for this world that we live in. We give you thanks for faith and for the opportunity um, to be gathered in a community where we can learn and we can grow together, when we can think about what it means um, to live out the teachings of Jesus. And we are incredibly grateful for that, uh, that privilege and that opportunity to be able to understand what it is that you're teaching us, to be able to use our gifts to serve you, uh, to be able to get, use our gifts uh, to worship and to praise you. But we give you thanks today for moms and for grandmothers and for uh, women in our lives who have been like mothers to us, whether we call them aunt, whether we uh, call them our, our friends and our neighbors, whoever they are, for their coaching, for their love, for their encouragement, for the way in which they've stood beside us at different times. We give you thanks. We pray your blessing upon them. We pray, too, for those who want to become mothers, those who are struggling with that. We ask that you be at work in their lives and in the lives of their families. Lord, we pray that you would surround us um, today with that love that mothers us and that encourages us to grow into the people that we have been called to be. So we pray that for each person in the room today that you would surround us with hope, faith, encouragement so that we might grow. Lord, we know that oftentimes we don't with the energy, if we don't take the time to listen to the ways in which you are pushing us and prodding us and encouraging us to step beyond where we are now and to become new people. We pray for the courage and the wisdom to make that change. God, we know that it's not easy to be meek that we will be criticized for being too committed to the cause of peace. We might be criticized for not being active enough. But God, help us to trust. Help us to be aware of your work in the world. To give us cause to trust. And give us an understanding of how deeply you are moving. Help us to see it and believe it. Help us to encourage it in other people. We pray for this world that we live in. We pray for meekness. We pray for the opportunity to pursue peace in all kinds of different ways, in all kinds of different places. Help us to go forth from this place to be people of peace. 
to be people who are committed to walking in your path, in your light. Lead us into a deeper understanding of what that way means. God, we thank you for all those who we have named. We pray for them in their need. We pray your strength to be with them, your healing to be with them, your protection to be with them, your comfort. And we pray for ourselves as we go forth into the world that as we go through this week and we come up against roadblocks, as we come up against people who are not at all meek, that you might encourage us to live out some of what we've heard here today, to look a little bit more like you. Lord, we thank you for this grace at work in our lives, and we pray your blessing upon this congregation and upon all those in it. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Happy Mother's Day to you. As you go forth, go forth in the strength of restraint. Go forth in the power of God, which is the power of meekness, ironically. Go forth with the strength that God gives you to be able to endure, to be able to demonstrate what it means to live out the values of Jesus Christ. Go forth in His power. Amen.